How's it going guys and welcome back for another video. Today I'm on my own Canon test server play.dexmc.net and this is going to be the first video I make on this server so I'm pretty excited today. Today we're going to talk about carbon comps and how they work and how you can make your own. The thing that we're going to be making this video is this right here a single carbon comp which means we don't have two of these going down as you see on most carbon comps. However it is pretty easy to make. If you do warp tutorial here on my server you'll warp to this area where you can see all the different carbon comps including of course the carbon comp that has two and how this one here is built. We're not going to do anything that looks like this so don't worry it's not going to be as complicated as this. We're going to make something a little bit more like this and I'm going to try to explain everything on the way. Now the reason carbon comps actually works is because we use game text. Now before this video really starts and we start building the carbon comp, let me go ahead and explain a little bit about what game takes are. I'm also going to leave the time that we start building this carbon comp either on the screen or in the description. But without further ado guys, let's go ahead and dig straight into it. If you want to understand what a carbon comp is, it's probably a good idea to learn a little bit more about game tech. Today we're going to talk about two different types of text. We're going to talk about game text and we're going to talk about redstone tech. Game text and redstone text is two completely different things. Things. One redstone tick is equal to two game ticks. And the difference between redstone ticks and game ticks is that game ticks is used in a lot of things. The day changes in game ticks, so that means the sun and the moon, the fireworks shoots in game ticks, the spawners spawn in game ticks, the chicken lay eggs in game ticks, pistons moving blocks is game ticks, TNT traveling game ticks. So, so in short, the game ticks is pretty much anything that has to do with the game itself and not redstone particular. Now that you know what the difference between those two are, let's go to take a closer look at how we are going to make the carbon comp today. This right here is a simple game tick clock. The way it works is that this one here is a sticky piston with a redstone block. Now if we remove the redstone right here, first we place a redstone right there that will activate this piston if it's lit up. Then at this current state right here, we're going to place one right there and that should lit it up and push it forward. Now since I'm in a world where I can't push the piston forward because I kind of want to show you it, I'm going to go ahead and pretend that the piston is pushing out and it's going to push this redstone block over here but now this one no longer have a signal which means it's going to retract it but it's going to have the redstone block with it and therefore we are making a clock and to quickly show you guys how that works let me go ahead and make a game tick clock real quick right there so now we are pretty much game ticking this right here and you can really use this for a lot of things not only carbon comps but also pseudo nukes efficient nukes and so on and so on but in this case we are going to be using it for the carpet comp where we're going to use it is by having pistons move carpet in a game tick which means the sand will kind of float on top of it and we are going to use this layout right here to do it and now that that is taken care of let's go ahead and dig straight into how you build your first carpet comp the first thing we're going to start with is making the carpets itself so we're going to go ahead and make it nine long and we're going to make it too high. Then next up, we're going to make one more right there that is two block in between. Again, this right here is going to be nine long. Once you have done that, you're going to go ahead and put ladders exactly like this on both sides. That way, that will keep the carpet floating so that it just doesn't break. Next up, you're going to go ahead and fill this area out here with carpets just like that as well as one of the sides of the wall or the stone walls right here i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that in a second so we're gonna go ahead and do this one right here why not there we go then what we're gonna need we're gonna need to make some temporary stone right there because that's where our piston is gonna go so let's go ahead and place that just like that next up what we're gonna need now is also a piston on this side so we're gonna make some temporary stone and while we do that, we can remove this one over here since we're pretty much done with that. Then let's go ahead and add the rest of the pistons like that. And of course, remove the blocks underneath it. Once you're done with that, go ahead and add a block to the back of the pistons just like that. And why not just go ahead and fill it out with redstone while you're at it. Now you've got the basic carpets laid down. And all you need now is just to kind of surround it with the necessary things that's going to make it work. The first thing we're going to talk about right now is boosters. So the first thing you want to do is that you want to add boosters. But you do not want to add boosters right here you're going to go ahead and have one block space and then you're going to add the boosters but only in this side right here you shouldn't worry about any of the other sides you can go ahead and you can block these off just like that now i'm going to go ahead and build this right here so let's go ahead and build it like that and then let's go ahead and count it's going to be four high once it's four high let's go ahead and build up these right here and close that in so we don't have to worry about that anymore next up is adding blocks to the top right here 
just like that. So we would somewhat protect this area over there without ruining the carpets. Of course, we can't take this stone away or anything like that. Once you've done that, next step is pretty much adding the pistons. So let's go ahead and add the pistons right here. That is what's going to hold up our sand and make sure that we can control how much sand is getting down into the cobweb just like that. Now we cannot make a redstone line right here because that is going to interfere with the pistons underneath. Therefore we have to build it at the top. So go ahead and lay out blocks on top of these pistons and of course light it up with some redstone. Once that is taken care of let's go ahead and add some redstone torches right here just to see if everything is working as it should. And there you go. Now everything is working exactly like we want it to. Next up is that we need to encase this right here. So let's go ahead and add these up like this. There we go. And of course a roof just like that. Once you're done with this part right here let's go ahead and continue and doing the other booster which is going to be located right here. On this side we can only have three dispensers like that or else it's going to interfere with our redstone but other than that you can just go ahead and place it all the way around just like that. Once you've done that feel free to make a roof like this and of course we're gonna have a wall right here just like that. Then go ahead and take some ladders we're gonna go ahead and protect this booster so no sand is getting caught in here and explode the sand compression and finally the last booster we're gonna have is an infinity booster you're gonna take it one space and then count for one two three four and then go ahead and place dispensers right there once you've done that go ahead and take your ladders again just quickly do that so nothing is getting caught inside of here we do not want that and then it's time to case in the last booster right here with trapdoors just like that once you've done that we're pretty much ready to start wire everything up so let's go ahead and dig straight into it. The first thing you're going to do is go to the back of the carpet comp and start wiring it up. You're going to wire it up exactly like you would with a power or a hammer or whatever. So it's really not a big problem doing it like this. I'm pretty sure everybody should be able to know how you do exactly this. Next up, let's go ahead and take the other one. We're going to go in the middle right here and we're going to add the repeaters and do exactly what we just did on the other side. Once you're done, it should look exactly like this. So make sure that you have wired everything up perfectly. Once you're done, you're pretty much ready to continue and start doing all the ticks. The first thing we're going to do is connect the third booster right here. So go ahead and cover that in blocks and of course put some redstone on top of it. Then you're going to build a block right here to the back of the sand compression, add a repeater on no ticks and go ahead and add the last piece of redstone that this repeater right here will activate through the dispenser. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and feel free to kind of do how you wish right here. You can go ahead and extend it like this, go two down, add one and then of course add two ticks to it. You can choose to go down here with redstone instead. It doesn't have to be like I'm doing right there. But there you go guys. Now that we have wired that up, it's time to do the carpet comp clock. So what we're going to do is add a block to the end of the pistons and add a repeater to it. We're going to do the exact same on the other side. There we go. Next up, we're going to build one hop just like that. And we're going to place a redstone on top of it. What you could do now is go one higher or you can just go ahead and go all the way around like this. Personally, I like to go one higher, which means we are going to have somewhat of a staircase right here. But there's many ways to redstone this up. I'm just going to go ahead and do it the way simpler way. That way you guys might be able to better understand what I'm doing. Now that you've done that, we need to remove some blocks because we need to add the piston that controls pretty much everything. What we're going to do is that we're going to take this redstone right here out. It's going to be on the side where the other booster is right there. Then what you want to do is you want to add a sticky piston and break this block right there and add a block of redstone. Once you've done that, go ahead and add a block like this. Put a redstone on top of it and go down one and add one single one right there. As you can see, it's starting to clock right now and of course your carpet should be moving exactly like it's doing down there. Now just to check that everything is all right, let's go ahead and open these pistons and quickly throw some sand in there to make sure that it's standing. It is exactly standing exactly where we wanted it to. So as you can see, we got floating sand in our carpet comp, which is exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and close up the pistons again and let me clear the entities right there. And now we're pretty much ready for the next step. The next step is going to happen right here. So right under this block right there, which is the piston as you can see. What you want to do is that you want to go ahead and add a redstone torch like that. Then you want to go a staircase down exactly like this and you want to add redstone torches to each of these. That right there should make the clock stop and now you're pretty much ready for the next step. What you want to do is get some redstone comparators, add a redstone comparator going into this torch right there through the block and add one in the other direction. Once you've done that, go ahead and add a redstone like this and of course two at the back. 
If everything looks like this, you're pretty much ready for the next step. We're going to add a repeater like that and a redstone next to it. And there we go, guys. What you pretty much got now is a fully functioning carpet comp. But before the video ends, let me go ahead and talk a little bit more about the ticks we added, the repeaters we added, and so on and so on. And also, you should remember that this right here will actually lock this piston here for one tick. So if your sand is going fast down when you press the button, the last line of carpet will not move exactly at the same time as the others. And if that's a problem, you're going to need to remove this dispenser right here. But on most cannons, you won't drop the sand almost instantly. But let's go ahead and dig straight into it. At the back of the carpet comp, that is where you're going to wire it up to the cannon itself that means you will most likely have a repeater there going over to whatever you have on the cannon over there but all right let's go ahead and imagine that we are pressing the button what's going to happen is that we're going to give these booster a signal the signal is going to follow along going over to these boosters right there and it's also going to start the clock because we have these comparators exactly like this which is going to give it a very long signal exactly long enough for all the sand to be boosted out before this one goes off that's going to have a redstone going all the way over to the third and last booster which is going off at three ticks shooting all your beautiful sand out of the carpet comp and that ladies and gentlemen is pretty much how you make your first carpet comp hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure you smash that like button and comment down below below what you would like to see me explain next. Other than that, hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day and I'll see you guys next time.